Welcome to Pixarize's scene for DeGeorge Syndrome, or 22Q11 Deletion Syndrome. This scene takes place at a pretty bizarre zoo, where the zany misadventures of a famous cartoon monkey are juxtaposed beside a bloodthirsty primordial reptile. How could you resist an intro like that? Answer, you can't. So let's get going. Let's anchor our scene. Take a gander at that angry ape in the top left corner of the image. I'm sure you recognize him. It's curious to George, of course. Although to be honest, he looks a lot more furious than curious. We'll figure out why he's so upset later on, but for now, just remember that curious to George is the star of the scene to help you remember we're talking about de George syndrome. Now, let's talk about the genetics behind de George syndrome. Take a look at the center of the image at that little girl visiting this zoo. See her tutu? Yep, tutus are Pixarize's symbol for the number 22, since, you know, two-two. So you can bet that the 22nd chromosome is involved here. DeGeorge syndrome results from a microdeletion on the 22nd chromosome. This deletion occurs on the long, or Q arm, of the chromosome in region 1 and band 1, hence the name 22Q11 deletion syndrome. Now, check out the little girl's fish shirt likely purchased from the aquarium exhibit. The fish on her shirt is here to remind us of fish, that is, fluorescent in situ hybridization. Fish is the technique of choice for making a definitive diagnosis of DeGeorge syndrome, since the microdeletion at chromosome 22 is too small to be detected via karyotyping. That's why we've put this fish right above her 22nd chromosome tutu. Now that we've covered the underlying genetics of DeGeorge, Let's talk a bit about the ramifications of that 2222Q11 deletion. Look at the bottom left corner of the image, inside the animal pen. See that pine tree in a bag and that file holder on the door? Well, the file holder on the door and the bag carrying the pine tree are both forms of pouches. And if you've been watching our other videos, you'd know that our symbol for 3 is tree, and our 4 is door. So the tree pouch and a door pouch must represent the third and fourth pouches. More specifically, the third or fourth branchial or pharyngeal pouches. These embryologic pouches fail to develop as a result of 22Q11 microdeletions, and these underdeveloped pouches cause most of the clinical symptoms of DeGeorge syndrome. What clinical features would those be, you ask? Well, we've got more symbols to explain them. Focus your attention on the leafy branch next to the pharyngeal pouch number tree. Recall that the third pharyngeal pouch develops into the thymus. When a 22Q11 deletion causes underdevelopment of the third branchial pouch, the result is thymic aplasia, which is represented here by our branch of thyme. Why is there a branch of thyme in this zoo enclosure, you ask? Well, you'd rather have it smelling like thyme than monkey excrement, right? Sorry, ape excrement. Curious to George is an ape, right? He has no tail. Whatever. The thymic aplasia, represented by this fallen thyme branch, can be spotted on chest x-ray as the absence of a thymic shadow. Speaking of curious to George, let's take another look at our hominoid friend. Notice how his cute little he-thinks-he's-people neckties are falling from his neck? Recall that both the third and fourth branchial pouches eventually give rise to the parathyroid glands. This pair of ties falling to the floor is meant to represent parathyroid dysplasia, or pair of thyroid dysplasia, and subsequent loss of parathyroid hormone. So, a consequence of a 22Q11 deletion is the underdevelopment of the third and fourth branchial pouches, and the consequences of underdeveloped third and fourth branchial pouches are thymic aplasia and parathyroid dysplasia. What are the consequences of thymic aplasia and parathyroid dysplasia? Well, look back outside at our tutu-clad zoo-goer. She's pretty shocked by what's going on inside the enclosure. So shocked that she's ended up dropping both her bubble tea and her ice cream. Her parents probably paid way too much for both of those refreshments, and they're not going to be pleased. Oh well. At least these casualties help us in our quest to master DeGeorge syndrome. See, the dropped bubble tea is meant to represent T-cell deficiency. T-cells mature in the thymus, and when you don't have a thymus, or you have a severely underdeveloped thymus, you end up with very few mature T-cells. The dropped ice cream pint is actually a calcium ice cream pint, 
a recurring symbol for calcium. When you have an underdeveloped parathyroid parathyroid gland, you end up with less parathyroid hormone. PTH signals a need for calcium, and without it, the body fails to extract more calcium from the bone and the intestines and fails to retain calcium in the kidneys, and you end up with hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia of any underlying cause is accompanied by telltale symptoms like muscle weakness, cramping, peripheral neuropathy, and tetany-associated Schwastex and Trousseau signs. Next, let's turn again to curious or furious de George. Notice that he's brandishing a cane. Frightening. The cane he's holding should help us remember that de George patients are immunodeficient. This makes sense since the dropped bubble T represented low levels of mature T cells. This leaves patients susceptible to recurrent fungal and viral infection. Now check out Furious de George's fuming face. This angry monkey face should help us remember the abnormal facies seen in de George patients. All right. Finally, we get to talk about what's making our mild-mannered ape friends so uncharacteristically upset. Well, take a step back and appreciate the rest of the scene. Ah, it all makes sense now. Looks like this zoo has done that thing zoos do where they extract dinosaur DNA from fossilized mosquitoes and clone new dinosaurs that inevitably wreak terrible havoc on everybody involved. Won't they ever learn? I guess not. As you can see, Furious de George's abnormal facies face is a response to one of those reckless dinos murdering an elephant. That's pretty messed up, and I'm glad de George is taking justice into his own adorable hands. Until now, we've only been discussing de George syndrome. It turns out that 22Q11 deletion syndromes actually display a lot of variation in their clinical presentations, despite their common genetic cause. And de George syndrome only describes one of these presentations. The other one that you need to know for your exams is velocardiofacial syndrome, which is characterized by a broader spectrum of symptoms. That's why this velociraptor is here. Velociraptor for velocardiofacial syndrome. This fancy name actually tells us a lot about the disease. Velo comes from the Latin velum, which refers to the palate. Check out our velociraptor's bloody upper lip. De George caught him red manned. Ib. Old. Yeah. Never mind. The bloody upper lip is to remind us that velocardiofacial syndrome often presents with a cleft palate, and I think it's safe to say that this guy's face is pretty abnormal as well. The facial in velocardiofacial syndrome refers to abnormal facies, a symptom shared with de George syndrome. Finally, the cardio in velocardiofacial syndrome refers to cardiac abnormalities, That's where our poor elephant victim comes in, particularly his trunk. Velocardiofacial syndrome presents with conotruncal abnormalities, notably persistent truncus arteriosus. An elephant trunk to help you remember truncus arteriosus. Nice. Next, take a look at the battle-worn floor tiles, where you'll notice that some are colored to resemble Tetris shapes. These tetris shapes should remind you of the other truncal abnormality, tetralogy of Fallot, or tetrasology of Fallot. Elephant truncus arteriosus and tetris tetralogy of Fallot are seen in both velocardiofacial syndrome as well as de George syndrome. That's why the elephant trunk and tetris floor tile lie between curious de George and his velocardiofacial velociraptor foe. If you're starting to get confused trying to sort out the difference between the two syndromes, you're not alone. It's confusing. Both de George and velocardiofacial syndromes stem from the same 22q11 deletion. De George syndrome refers more specifically to the underdevelopment or aplasia of the thymus and parathyroid glands and the development of cotruncal abnormalities. Velocardiofacial syndrome generally refers to the palate, conotruncal, and facial abnormalities, as the name suggests. About 10% of patients with velocardiofacial syndrome also have de George syndrome, which often leads to conflation of these terms and confused medical students. Okie dokie. Hope you enjoyed how this scene blended the G-rated pleasantness of a beloved children's book character with the gratuitous PG-13 rated gore of a beloved dinosaur movie. I think the only one who wasn't thrilled was that elephant. Can't please them all. Now that you've mastered these 22Q11 deletion syndromes, You can focus more on drinking bubble tea and eating ice cream. 
Maybe take off the tutu though. Until next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the interactive version of this image at pixarize.com by following the link in the description. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.